Welcome learners, I am Divya Nath. Today we are going to discuss about model 3, lesson 7, presentation of data part 1. In this module, we are going to learn about the concept of presentation of data, meaning and purpose of table. Then we are going to learn about format of a table. Then we are going to discuss about reference table and special purpose table. Thereafter, we are able to distinguish between them. Then we are going to discuss meaning and construction of simple bar charts and in the last we are going to discuss about need and construction of component bar charts oftenly known as subdivided bar diagrams. Now let's start with the class. In the previous chapter we have discussed about frequency arrays and frequency distribution whereas in this chapter we are going to learn how data can be presented in many ways. Data presented in the form of diagrams is easiest to interpret and attractive and is easy to understand. For example, when we construct a table, bar diagrams, histograms, pie diagram, we easily get to understand the information. Let's discuss the meaning and purpose of a table first. What is a table? A table is a systematic arrangement of related statistical data in rows and columns with some predetermined aim or purpose. That means here we are arranging systematically related statistical data in rows and columns and this is done for a predefined purpose. Now the question comes why do we construct a table? What is the purpose of constructing a table? The purpose of a table is to simplify presentation of data and make comparison easy. As we know we can see from the table that in this table we are able to see that age groups have been given and it is given of children and we know how many children are there in the particular age group. So with the help of table we can simplify the presentation of data and make comparison easy. Next we are going to discuss about the parts or format of a table. When we discuss about the format of a table, we are counting 8 elements in it. So we have to remember that when we talk about format of a table, we need to discuss about 8 concepts. Very first, table number. Every table must have a table number. Second, title. Every table must have a title. Third, head note which gives in bracket tells you another information about title. Then comes caption, then comes stub heads and we can see over here body of the table, the most important thing where all the information is being there, body of the table. Next footnote, just below the body of the table, after that source. So how many parts of the table are? There are 8 parts of the table. Now we are going to discuss them in detail. Very first, table number. Every table should be supported with a table number and it should be always indicated in the top. Likewise, in this table you can see table 7.1. What does it do? Why do we number the table? We number the table because it facilitates location of the tables. Second, title. Every table must have a title. Now, how should I give the title to the table? The title should be such that, that it is brief and to the point and if it's possible, it should be in bold and capital letters. So we are saying when we write a title for the table, it should be in bold letters and it should be to the point. Now after this, we are going to discuss about head note. As you can see in the example, the head note is in brackets in rupees crores that means when we talk about head note it is just written below the title so the very first we are talking about the location where to write the head note first we are going to write table number then we are going to discuss about title and then we are going to write head note head note will be just below the title and it will be in the brackets now what is the purpose of writing in head note as we can see it clarifies the content of the table and gives units of measurement like in this example we have written in rupees crores. So it must be written in brackets 
on the right hand side top of the table just immediate below the title. So, we have to learn how to write head note also. After this we are going to discuss about stubs. What are stubs? In this particular example if we talk about stub is age group in bracket years. So, we can oftenly discuss it as rows heading. So, stubs are the title of the rows of a table. These title indicates information contained in the row of the table. Over here it indicates that these are the years. So, we are talking about age group of the children. Whereas, when we talk about captions, what are the captions? Captions are the headings of the column. It is the title given to the columns of a table. It indicates information contained in the columns of the table. Over here, the caption is number of children. And here, we have discussed so many children are there. So, we have learned about stubs and we have learned about caption. Now, the next main body of field. So, when you talk about main body of the field, it starts from 3 to 5, 5 to 7, 7 to 9, 200, 125, 318. That means all the numerical information contained in the table is main body of field. It is the most important part of the table because it contains the numerical information about which a hint is given in the title. Now, the next footnote. Footnote will be just below the body of the field. So, I should know very first where I should write the footnote. First thing, it is just below the body of the field. So, below the body of the field, we are going to write footnote. Now, what is the purpose of writing a footnote? It is for clarification of the reader. Suppose the time is depression or recession or demonetization. If I am collecting a data in that period, I should mention because the data would vary a lot as per the normal periods. So, it is very important to write footnote in certain situations where information need to be supplemented. So, once again footnote is given for clarification of the reader. It is mentioned at the bottom of the table. They are generally given when the information in the table need to be supplemented. Next, most important source of data. I am making a table and have not written from where the data is being taken. No importance will be given to the table because originality could not be checked. So, source of data. It is essential to mention the source of data presented in the table. It helps the reader to check the original source of data himself and get more of it on the subject. So, if I want to get more knowledge, if I want to know more, then what I am going to do? I am going to look for that particular site or look for the particular reference, log in and I will get more information about that. So, students, we have learned about the parts of a table. How many parts are there? There are 8 parts. Very first was table number, then we have discussed title, after that we have discussed head note, then we have discussed about stubs and captions, then we have discussed about body of the field and footnote and the last source. So, once we know about what are the different parts of the table, now I can discuss the different types of a table. There are two different types of a table, reference popularly known as journal purpose tables, other is special purpose or test tables. So, tables can be constructed in two ways. Let us discuss them in detail. Very first, reference or journal purpose table. Now, it is that table which is of journal use. A lot of information content is there. So, it is just a data bank for the researchers for their studies. For example, as you can see, census reports of India. A lot of information regarding employment, regarding income, number of members, education, all different kind of information is there in this report. So, we are saying journal purpose tables are of journal use. Such tables are just data bank for the use of researchers for their studies. Next, what are special purpose table or test tables? Now, these are those tables which are prepared for some 
specific purpose in mind that means they are being made for some special purpose. Now if you are going to make some small table and it is for your own purpose it will be called as test tables or we can say special table. Now these are small tables limited to the problem under consideration. So that is why they are also being called as or represented in the form of result or analysis. Suppose I want to know about sales of a particular company, then it's a small table. It will relate to 12 months from January to December and here we are going to record the sales, that's all, a small table. So we now know what is a general purpose table and a special purpose table. Once we know different types of tables, we can discuss how to construct a table. Let's see with the help of an example. Now we have done the parts of a table, I know how to do it, what are the different parts of the table. After that I have learned the different types of table, I can construct a table. So when we talk about the example over here, there are 50 science, 50 commerce and 50 art students in a college. So very first thing when I read the first line, it becomes very clear that we are talking about streams of education, science, commerce, art and they have given us the total number of students. The number of students from poor families is same for each course and their total is 30. Now, the next information is that they are telling us the number of students from poor families is 30. So, total students have been given. Now, the family category is poor. So, they are talking about the status, economic status right now. Next, where is Science and commerce courses are equally popular in rich families. Now we are talking about rich families, right? Next they are talking about yet the number of rich art students is twice as much. They are giving us specific information. So point by point we are picking each of the information and analyzing it. We need to do it because the first step to construct a table is to find the data and classify into different similar groups. That's what we have learned in previous chapter. In all, 40 students from or are from the rich families studying in the college. So they are giving us they are how many students for rich class? 40 students. The majority of the students are from middle class families and their number is 80. So first step, I will classify my raw data into science, commerce and arts for each of the category for poor, for middle class, for rich class. So let's see what we have learned over here from the whole question. 10 students for science, 10 for commerce and 10 for arts in case of poor families. The line is being given. The number of students from poor families is same for each course and there is total of 30. So, if you divide equally into 3 streams, we get 10, 10, 10. 10 for science, 10 for commerce, 10 for arts. Now, the next, in case of rich families, they have written, whereas science and commerce courses are equally popular in rich families, yet the number of rich art students is twice as much. Or how many students are there? 40 students are there. So, if I want to make a twice and make equal for commerce and science, then it would be 10 for commerce, 10 for science and 20 for arts. So, from this line we have divided the information into different category. Now, for the middle class when we talk about the total strength is 80. For here we need to calculate it by subtracting what we have got because over there in the top line it is being given that there are 50 science students. 10 for poor families we have done. Then we have discussed over 10 for rich families. 50 minus 10 minus 10 gives you 30 commerce students. Likewise, 50 minus 10 minus 10 gives 30 students for commerce. Likewise, 50 minus 10 minus 10, 30 for science. Now for arts, 50 minus 10 minus 20 is equals to 20. Now, I have taken out the data and classified into similar groups, the first step. Let's see how we have constructed the table. Now, over here you can see very first we have given the table number, the table number 7.1. 
then we have selected the title of the table very surely representing the to the point effect that is distribution of students according to course that means commerce, arts, science, we have summed up the course and economic status. So, now we have given the title to the table, then we have drawn the table. You can see over here in rows we have got economic status and in the columns we have given course status. So, rich, science, arts, commerce, total. We have just calculated 10 science, 20 arts, 10 commerce, total comes to 40. Middle class, the total class was given as 80, 30 for science, 20 for arts, 30 for commerce and the total comes to 80. Whereas for the poor families, what has happened? In case of poor families, we have got 10 for science, 10 for arts, 10 for commerce and the total becomes 30. So now we are going to make the total, total comes to 150 over here and on the sidewise total also comes to 150. This is how we have constructed a table. So students, here we are noting down the points, table number is being given. Title of the topic is very appropriate and to the point and it is bold in letters. Then we have constructed the table with the help of similar data segregating it into meaningful information. Now once we have constructed the table with the help of an example, we can move on to the next topic that is bar charts or diagrams. Now what do we mean by the word bar diagram or what are bar diagrams? Bar diagrams are those diagrams which, are, we, which present the data in the form of bars or rectangle. Now when we talk about bar diagrams, bar diagrams may be horizontally can be vertically. So we are saying bar diagrams are those diagrams in which data is presented in the form of bars and rectangles. Now before we discuss different types of bar diagrams, we must know the key features of bars and then only we can construct the different types of bar charts. Let us discuss the key features of the bar charts. The very first key feature with the help of this diagram we can observe the length of the bars can differ according to the values. So we are seeing that the length of the bars are up and down that means the length are varying whereas the breadth remains the same. You can see in all the bars, all the rectangles the length are changing but the breadth remains same. Now these bars can be vertical or horizontal. So we are saying the bars can be vertical or horizontal over here the picture is drawn in the form of vertical and vertical is more popular. We normally do not draw horizontal bar diagrams. Now the next key feature bars are equidistant from each other as you can see the distance between the bars are equal. Now the most important feature all bars have a common base line. So here we have learned about the key features about the bar diagrams. Now we can discuss different types of bar diagrams. There are mainly two different types of bar diagrams. One is simple bar chart, other is component bar chart. When we talk about simple bar chart, in this we can also discuss about single bar chart where single data is being given, multiple bar chart where two data or more than two data are being given to us. So let us discuss them in detail what is a simple bar chart and then we are going to discuss about component bar chart. Now what is a simple bar chart? Simple bar charts are those diagrams which are based on a single set of numerical data that means we got only one type of a data. Now while we are drawing these bars they can be vertical as well as horizontal but as I have told you earlier you will always go for vertical bars. Now let us see it with the help of the question. Draw simple bar diagram to represent the profits of a bank for 5 years. So very first the years would be on x axis and we have learned that the while we are drawing the bars the width of the bars remains same, the distance between the bar remains same. So we are going to plot the years first. Mind it while you are drawing the diagrams you have to label them, you have to write the key points, key keys, you have to make those keys over there to indicate what does it represent. So we are first writing 
on x axis years, then we are plotting the years 1989, 1990, 1991, 1992, 1993 in such a way that they are equidistant and whatever the rectangles I am going to make they will be of equal size in the width. Now, the profits, now the length of the bars are going to change as the profit changes. So, on y axis I am writing profit in millions that in dollars and then I am plotting it 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50 as we can see the data starts from 10 ends up to 42. So, we have taken, we have just the first step for each student is that you must label your diagram first and then draw otherwise you will forget afterwards. So, we have labeled x axis, we have labeled y axis, now we are going to draw the length of the bars. As you can see for 1989 it is 10, 1990 it is 12, 1991 it is 18, 1992 it is 25 and 1993 it is 40. Is it ok? So, we have drawn the length. You can see the length is increasing as the value is increasing and on the right hand side we have just put a key. So, here we are able to draw simple bar chart because in this we have drawn only one data that is profit. Now, the next is multiple bar diagrams. Now, when we talk about multiple bar diagrams, multiple bar diagrams or charts represents two or more than two sets of data simultaneously. Suppose they have given you export import for the particular year, they are given you profit and losses for the particular year. So, the two types of data birth rate, death rate, so two kinds of data for the same specific year is being given to you, then we are going to draw multiple bar diagram. Let us see how we construct a multiple bar diagram with the help of this example. So, here the example states draw a multiple bar chart to represent the import and export of India. The values have been given in rupees for the year 1991 to 1995. That means on x axis I will be having years and I will be plotting 1991, 1992, 1993, 1994 and 1995. But when I look for the value we have given here in the question it has given two sets of information. They have given us the value of imports, they have given us the value of exports. So, we are not going to draw single bar diagram, here we have to draw multiple bar diagrams because two set of data is being given to us. So, we are going to plot import and export for the one year that is 1991. Then we are going to draw import and export bar diagrams with respect to 1992. Now, what should I do? How should I start? Because I have just learned the single bar diagram. In case of single bar diagram for a particular year we only draw one bar whereas in case of multiple bar diagram we draw two bars without distance between them for a particular year. Let us see how we have done it. Over here you can see we have written on the top it is a multiple bar chart. On x axis we have written years on y axis income and export both are being written that means for the particular year we are going to draw for both the set of data import as well as export. So, 1991 you can see the yellow is import, the green is for export, the keys have been made to indicate what this particular bar denotes. So, first is for imports, see for the exports there is no distance between them, but the width of the bars in all the cases are same. Now, the distance between the each year also remains the same. Hence, we are able to construct multiple bar chart. So, students we have learned in case of multiple bar chart, the two bars or three bars whenever the multiple data is being given, the distance will not be there between the bars for a particular year, the distance would be within the years. So, we now know about simple bar charts, we can draw single bar chart and multiple bar chart. Single bar chart was drawn when single data was being given to us, whereas in case of multiple bar chart, two data or more than two data is given to us. Now, let us discuss about component bar chart, very important. How will I come to know that I have to make a component bar chart or a multiple bar chart? Why I am saying this? Because in component bar chart also more than two data is being given to us, two data or more than two data is given to us. Now, if two data 
two sets of information is given to me or more than two sets of information given to me as a student, how will I identify whether I have to draw a multiple bar diagram or a component bar diagram? For this students, we need to see that the total is given. If the total is given in the question, then we have to draw component bar chart. Whereas, if no total as you can see in the previous example for the export and import is given to us, then in that case multiple bar diagram will be done. So, let us discuss component bar chart once again. Component bar chart is used to represent data in which the total magnitude is divided into different components. Now, let us see in the diagram particularly you can see different three colors one is blue, one is purple, other is nearest to orange. We can see these are the three components in the bar that means three kind of data is being given to us. So, this is a component bar chart. Next in this diagram we first make simple bars. Now, the thing is how should I construct a component bar chart? Very first I will make the bar length of the total value being given to us. That is why I told you in component bar chart we need to have a total. So, I will first draw a simple bar to the total of the given data to me. Then I will start dividing each bars for each class. That means, we first make simple bar for each class taking total magnitude in that class. Then we divide these simple bars into parts in the ratio of various components. So, this type of diagram shows the variation in different components. That means, in a single bar, I will be able to identify this portion belongs to this, this portion belongs to that. We are able to identify that as well as it also shows variation between different classes. So, this type of diagram shows the variation in different components within each class as well as between different classes. For example, stake chart. Now, let us take an example to understand it better. Suppose this question is given to me. Now, as a student, I have to think because I can see three kind of information is given to me. One is about pencils, one is about pens, one is about scale. Now, by seeing the question before reading also by seeing the data just I have to decide whether it is a multiple or a subdivided bar diagram. Now, let us see because there are three kinds of information and total is being given to us. We have just learned when the total is given to us definitely we are going to draw component bar diagram, but we have to read the question to analyze whether we have doing it in a right way or not. Sometimes the examiner tries to fool the children. What they do is that they give the total and they ask in the question to draw multiple bar diagram. Then the total is just for to make students confuse about it. So, here I am reading the question for you. The following tables gives the amount of pencil, pens and scales produced by a company in the years represent the information in a bar chart. The question is not telling to us that whether I should draw a multiple bar diagram or I should draw a subdivided bar diagram. Now, as a student how I have identified that I have to draw a component bar diagram because the total is given to it. So, that means the first bar for year 2008 the total length of the bar would be 85. For 2009 the total length of the bar would be 117 that means 117. For the year 2010, the total length of the bar is 140 and then we are going to classify into pen, pencils and scale. Let us see how we have done it. So, on the x axis we have mentioned year 2008, 2009, 2010. On y axis we are going to have you can see over here colors have been given scale, pens and pencil. You can see in year 2008, blue shows your pencils, red shows your pen and scale shows your green. So, the total length was 80. Now, in the previous slide as you can see the data was given, we have just plotted first pencils, draw a line and then whatever the data is being given for the pens, just add up to get a cumulative frequency, draw the next line and the left space is for scale. Likewise, for year 2009, I am repeating once again, first make a line for the pencils, whatever the data value is being given, then add to the value of pens to the pencils value, you will get a cumulative value, you will again draw a line and the left over is scale. Likewise, you are going to draw the component 
bar diagram. Now, as you can see in the component bar diagrams, we can easily find the variations. How much is there between the years? In 2008, how much was pencils? In 2009, there was increase in pencils. In 2000, there was more increase in pencils. So, we can see from the data year wise as well as within the year. So, when we talk about within the year, we are telling comparison between scale, pens and pencil. So, we can first observe in year 2008, the pens are more, pencils and scales are almost nearby equal to each other. So, component bar diagram helps us to make a comparison within the bar as well as between the years also. So, students, we have learned about how data have been collected and how they could be arranged in a beautiful way so that it is easy to understand. A good presentation highlights and brings out important points for necessary comparison. We have discussed about tables, frequency arrays, frequency distribution and timeline graph. So, students we have learned about how to draw component bar diagram which is also known as subdivided bar diagram. Let us have a quick recap what we have learned up till now. We have learned that the data can be arranged and presented in some useful form. A good presentation highlights the data and brings out important points for necessary comparison. Tables, frequency arrays, frequency distribution, time series, line graphs are some important ways in which data can be presented. After data have been collected, they must be arranged and presented in a table in a systematic presentation of data in rows and columns. We have learned about the formats of a table which consists that there must be 8 parts. Thereafter, we have discussed about bar diagram. We now know that the bar diagrams are those diagrams which present the data in the form of bars and rectangles. They can be constructed in simple way and in multiple bar chart. Whereas, we can also discuss it that bar diagram can be constructed in the form of subdivided bar diagram. We have learned the key points regarding the bar diagrams also. So, students we will meet on the next lecture till then thank you.